Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the spark plugs on a 2004 Lexus GS300. The process is very similar, if not exactly the same, for any Lexus or Toyota model with a 2JZ GE engine. For a full list of compatible vehicle models, please have a look at the video description below. The tools you'll be needing are a ratchet with 12 and 10mm sockets, a screwdriver with a Phillips head bit, a variety of pliers as there are a lot of hoses that we will be removing, a 14mm open-ended wrench, a 5mm hex socket, a vacuum cleaner to clean up the gunk in the spark plug holes, a torque wrench, and a 5 by 8 inch spark plug socket. The parts you'll be needing are a set of 3 coil packs, an ignition wire set, and a set of 6 spark plugs. Before we proceed, a small warning. Replacing the spark plugs should only be done on an engine that hasn't been driven in a while and is sufficiently cold. The torque specs for tightening down spark plugs to the cylinder head are only designed for a cold engine. The cylinder head is made out of aluminum and it is soft when warm. This can throw off the torque reading when you tighten the spark plugs down. To get started, pop the hood and remove the negative terminal on the battery. It takes a 10mm bolt. The spark plugs are located beneath the intake manifold which in turn is located beneath the engine cover. So we will be removing that first. Remove the four 10mm bolts holding in the engine cover and set the cover aside. Next, we'll loosen the two clamps holding the pipe that goes from the air cleaner assembly into the intake. Use the screwdriver with a Phillips head bit to do this. The exhaust side valve cover is connected to the intake through this breather hose, so we need to remove this as well. These hoses can be on pretty tight due to their close proximity to the engine and the heat it generates, so definitely be prepared for some tugging. Now you can remove the air intake pipe and set it aside. Remove the throttle control motor connector by pushing on the tab and pulling on the connector. And similarly disconnect the throttle position sensor connector. Remove this 10mm bolt holding the wiring harness to the throttle body. And then disconnect the accelerator pedal position sensor. Remove the accelerator cable by turning the spool and pushing the locking pin out through the space provided as shown. Loosen either one of them by using the open side of a wrench and then set the cable free. Next, we will remove the hose going from the PCV valve to the intake. Slide the clamp off and then slide the hose off. Follow the same process for the air assist to intake hose which is located diagonally below the PCV valve hose. To finish off the removal of vacuum hoses, remove this vacuum hose which is located right next to the PCV valve hose. Towards the back of the intake air plenum, there is another 10mm bolt that holds in the VSV connector bracket that you need to remove. Finally, loosen the clamp and remove the coolant bypass hose that goes into the throttle body. Remember to slide a paper towel underneath before you do this as a little bit of coolant will leak out. The air intake is held to the plenum using 4 bolts on the top and 2 nuts on the bottom as shown. All 6 fasteners are 12mm in size. The top 4 bolts are pretty easy to reach, but the bottom 2 nuts are pretty tight and you may need a smaller wrench to reach them. Finally, remove these two 12mm bolts holding the throttle body plate to the engine. Now you should be able to slide the throttle body assembly off of the intake plenum studs and set it to the side as shown. To completely expose the six spark plugs on their wires, the timing cover needs to be removed. Remove the four 5mm hex bolts holding the cover in and set it to the side. Now that we have better access to the spark plugs and their wires, it is a good time for an initial vacuum. This will help reduce the chance of any dust or debris getting into the engine cylinders when we remove the spark plugs. The first step in replacing the spark plugs is to remove the connectors from the coil packs. The design of the inline 6 2JZ engine in this car is such that the spark plug connectors are located in the valley between the intake and the exhaust valves. This means that they are exposed to a lot of heat as the car is used and therefore there is a good chance that the connectors are old and brittle. This is exactly the case for me as the old connectors seem to be held in by some kind of RTV or JB weld. Since the connectors go to the spark plugs, if they come loose it can cause misfires, so now would be a good time to repair them. I ended up doing just that and that will be my next video on how to repair these connectors, so stay tuned for that. Remove the three electrical connectors by either yanking them out with pliers or by bending in the plastic tab to release them, depending on how intact they are. Then remove the two wires from the little bracket holding them in and set the entire wiring harness aside. The ignition system on a 2JZ GE engine is a little different and can be a little confusing especially if you haven't worked on it before. So before we start removing the plugs and the wires, a little explanation on how it's set up. 
The ignition system on this car is called a wasted spark system. In this system, the spark plugs fire in pairs, one cylinder on the exhaust stroke and the other cylinder on the intake stroke. Since the spark that is generated during the exhaust stroke serves no real purpose, it is called a wasted spark system. The main advantage of this system is that it reduces the number of ignition components required as a single wire and coil pack are shared between two cylinders. Cylinders 1 and 6 share a boot and a coil plug, followed by cylinders 2 and 5, and finally cylinders 3 and 4. We will start by removing the boot from cylinder number 5. In my case, the boot was pretty old and came apart from the wire. I just had to pull on the wire to remove it from the spark plug. Now go to cylinder number 2 and remove the 10mm bolt holding the coil pack to the cylinder head. Pull upwards on the coil pack to remove its boot from the spark plug. This coil pack is connected to the boot that we just removed from cylinder number 5. Next, follow a similar procedure by removing the boot from cylinder number 1 and the coil pack from cylinder number 6. As you can see, sometimes when we remove the coil pack, the rubber boot may remain on the cylinder. Use a pair of pliers to remove it. The final pair to do are cylinders 3 and 4 in the middle. As you can see, there is quite a bit of gunk in the valleys and also in the spark plug holes, so we will suck some of this dirt up before we remove the spark plugs. To remove the spark plug from the cylinder head, use a 5 by 8 inch spark plug socket. After removing the plug, remember that the hole that you see is a direct line into the combustion chamber, so be very careful not to drop anything inside. To minimize the chance of anything getting inside the cylinder, I'll be removing a plug and replacing it with a new one immediately before moving on to the next spark plug. While installing the new spark plug, first hand tighten before using a socket to make sure that you don't cross thread. The cylinder head is aluminum and the threads can strip very easily especially if the engine is warm. After the spark plug is nice and snug, torque it down to 13 foot pounds. Now you can go ahead and follow the exact same procedure for the 5 remaining cylinders. My torque wrench ended up being a little too big for the final cylinder at the back, so I ended up using a smaller torque wrench to get some clearance. Now that we're done installing the spark plugs, we can move on to setting up our new coil packs and wires. If you don't plan on doing this, you can skip ahead to the next chapter in the video. The ignition wire set from NGK that I used comes with a number on each wire which specifies which cylinder the boot is supposed to go on. Install a coil pack onto each of the wires by pushing the wire down onto the coil pack until the locking mechanism engages as shown. In case you want to replace just the coil pack or the wires, you can separate the coil pack from the wire using a flathead screwdriver as shown. To reinstall the coil packs and the wires, read the number that is written on the wire. Here we can see the number 5 on the wire, so we will install the boot on cylinder number 5 which is the second from the last cylinder. To install the boot, all you have to do is push firmly down onto the spark plug hole. As I explained earlier, the boot on cylinder number 5 is connected to a coil pack on cylinder number 2. Installation of the coil pack is very similar, just push down firmly onto the spark plug hole. Moving on to the wire label 3, first install the boot of the wire onto cylinder number 3 and then install its coil pack onto cylinder number 4. Finally for the last wire labeled 1, install the boot onto cylinder number 1 and install its coil pack on cylinder number 6. Now we can screw in the 10mm bolts holding the coil packs to the cylinder head. The torque spec for these bolts is 71 inch pounds. For the last coil pack at the back, there's not enough space for a torque wrench, so it should be enough if you snug the bolt down. Now we can go ahead and connect the electrical connectors to the coil packs. Just push them in until they click into place. This completes the replacement of the spark plugs and we're now ready to put everything back together. Tilt the throttle body assembly back down and then slide it onto the plenum studs. Hand tighten the four bolts and the two nuts holding the throttle body assembly to the plenum. This will secure it in place while we reconnect all the electrical connectors and hoses. Reinstall the coolant bypass hose and don't forget to put the clamp on using a pair of pliers. Reinstall the throttle position sensor connector followed by the air assist to intake hose along with its clamp. Reinstall this vacuum hose on the back of the throttle body assembly, followed by the 10mm bolt holding the VSV electrical connector bracket. Slide the accelerator cable back into its bracket and use the two 40mm adjusting nuts to tighten it into place. Pull this pull back as shown and then slide the accelerator cable pin in to secure it. As you can see, 
there is a little bit of slack in the accelerator cable. You can adjust this and make it more tight using the two 14mm adjusting nuts. Unscrew the two nuts to loosen the cable from the bracket and then pull on the cable to make it tight. Once the cable is tight enough, tighten the nuts back down to secure it into the bracket. Install the throttle motor control connector on the front of the throttle body assembly, followed by the accelerator pedal position sensor on the back. Now we can tighten down the four bolts on the two nuts holding the throttle body assembly to the plenum. Don't forget these two nuts holding the throttle body plate to the engine. Reinstall the timing cover and tighten down the four 5mm hex bolts. Now we can install the air pipe going from the air cleaner assembly into the throttle body. The pipe compresses like an accordion, so use this to wiggle it into place. Slide on the air pipe going from the exhaust valve cover to the air pipe along with its clamp. Tighten down the two worm clamps securing the air pipe by using a Phillips head screwdriver bit. Don't forget this 10mm bolt holding the wiring harness to the engine. I probably should have done this before installing the air pipe. Finally, reinstall the hose going from the PCV valve to the throttle body assembly along with its clamp. Now we can go ahead and reconnect the negative terminal of the battery and tighten it down using a 10mm socket. Before we start the engine up, it's good to give the engine bay a quick once over just to make sure all sensors and hoses have been reconnected properly. Once you're done with that, it's time to start the engine up. All you have to do really is just make sure that the idle is smooth and there aren't any weird noises coming from the engine bay. Look under the throttle body assembly where we disconnected the coolant bypass hose just to make sure that the connection is tight and there is no coolant leaking out. You can use the accelerator cable spool to give the engine a few revs and make sure everything sounds smooth. It's also useful to get inside the car and see if any check engine lights pop up. Once you're satisfied everything looks good, turn the car off and then install the main engine cover. Tighten the four 10mm nuts holding it down and we are good to go. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you like the content and would like to see more, do consider subscribing as I make a new video every other week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.